Hi there folks, welcome back to Glossniff Garage. A little bit of an unexpected video today. We are looking at the Aoshima Toyota 2000 GT. Won this kit in a competition on Instagram and was sent this by Aoshima. Um, picked my name at random from everyone that entered and I was one of the lucky winners. So I wasn't expecting to be doing any more videos for a little while as I'm be moving to a new house very soon. Uh, hopefully have a new area set up where I can build and record some actual build footage, put up some build videos and stuff for you guys. So yeah, uh, this is a bit of a surprise this one. So this kit is a brand new tooling by Aoshima. Uh, um, just released this year. Uh, I don't believe I've not seen it for sale anywhere yet, so I don't know if it's only been released in Japan at the moment. But uh, yeah, I was really lucky to, to win this kit. So I'm um, have a wee look at the box as usual. So lovely box art, really nice depiction of the car there. Then on the side, got a couple of images of the finished model, and a little bit of the blurb about the 2000 GT. I um, was surprised to find that this car was developed by Yamaha and originally the concept for the car was uh, offered to Nissan uh, but they turned it down and then Toyota took up the concept and made some changes. Um, really first proper Japanese sports car. I know you had other ones before but um, this was the first time they had a proper go at it I believe. Um, and in the back here you've got your colours, the usual sort of caution notices and stuff. And yeah, on the other side. This is number one in the sports car series. So I don't know if that's a new series that they're starting or if they're just placing this one at number one. So give me a little minute, I will get these bags opened up and we will take a look at the sprues and see how this brand new tool looks. Right, so I've got the boxes opened up, uh, the bags opened up, sorry, and start off with a wee quick shifty at the instruction manual. So this is actually quite a hefty instruction manual for, from Aoshima. Quite a lot, of, a lot of parts to this kit. Quite a lot to do in here. Um, you can see here all your sprues listed there. And it shows you here there's a couple of parts that aren't used. Now, with this being a new tooling, I'm assuming that they're going to be bringing out some other variation on the kit shortly because these are obviously meant for. Um, something else so i'm guessing we'll, we'll be seeing more of th th this kit in the future different variations on it so a really quick look at the colors that we need it's pretty standard so mr hobby colors there so not too many colors needed but obviously a lot of these it's like they'll tell you to use chrome or silver for like half the car and you need to sort of Add a bit of variation in there for different sort of me metallic colours. Um, so first we will look at the decal sheet. So it's quite a long de decal sheet. Um, there's a lot of dials and stuff on this. Um, I really like the dashboard. This looks incredibly detailed. You get uh, your wood grain decals there for your dash and centre console and stuff. But you've also got all these dials there too. You've also got heater controls, your radio, different switches, they're all decals so that's going to make it a lot easier to detail up that dashboard rather than trying to paint everything. You've got the everything there. Um, although those decals will be pretty fiddly and have a lot of patience to do them. Also comes with a sheet of the uh, chrome sticky stuff, the sort of bare metal foil type stuff. So first couple of sprues we will look at, we have got the tail lights and indicators here, which I also want to mould in this, the red and orange, which I, I really like. I think it's a really nice uh, touch, makes them look a bit more realistic. 
um, than painting them. Uh, so yeah. Next one we have got looks like the rear subframe. Two parts there. You've got your rear differential as well. And next up we have got some suspension parts. So we've got the suspension arms, a couple of number plates. Um, not really sure what some of these parts are. Let's look at grill there. I don't know if that's from the dashboard, the heater vents. Um, the anti roll bar, rear view mirror. Sort of contact points where you would cut the parts off of the sprue are quite thick. Looks like a couple of speakers there. Gear lever. Some more chassis parts, steering rack. And yeah, some more chassis parts below it. Sir. Next one we have got your drivetrain, gearbox, oil pan, start the drive shaft, you've also got the twin exhausts and your brake discs. Then here we've got the wheel hubs and looks like your rear suspension and subframe. Now, there is a lot of chrome parts in this kit. So we've got window wipers and rear view mirrors, or side mirrors. Like they might be. Yep, there's are inserts for the side mirrors. So these got a point there where they go in place. And then we've got the dashboard on its own sprue. Like I've seen before, it's quite a detailed dash. You've got decals for everything on there. It's a separately moulded switch that gets glued in there too. And you can see those heater controls are pretty well defined. Uh, you can see your switches there. So yeah, quite impressed with that. Next one is interior parts. So this is your seats actually come in three parts. You've got the main body of the seat, the bottom and the back, and then you've got the backs there separately moulded, and also a couple of headrests there. And you've got pedals and your steering wheel. And this is a grab bar that goes on the dashboard the centre console and the top of the dashboard those seats look really nice really nice and clean again those contact points are super thick right, we've got the next to crack on with the chrome sprues so this is various door handles got the rear bumpers there your interior door handles, window winders, these are the latches for the bonnet but again those contact points are really big and the, these when you snip those off you're going to be left with holes in the chrome. So these will probably need to get uh, stripped and repainted. Front bumpers there too. And the next chrome sprue, which I'm quite impressed with, is the chrome trims for around the window are separately moulded. So you don't need to try and mask it off and paint them. So it's quite nice. Right, and we've also got backs of the lights. It's the rear lights. 
exterior door handles, your front grill and light housing, and your exhaust tips. So the fuel filler cap there too. Another front grill piece. Front indicator housings. Um, looks like the rear door op uh, door handle and a couple of tiny little switches or buttons there. But yeah, um, those are going to be really hard to get out of there because of the, how thick the contact points are. You've got to be really, really careful when you remove those. Next up, we have got the wheels. So, finished in chrome again. And you've got your centre caps there as well. And now onto the clear parts. So front windows, really nice and clean clear parts here. Side windows and your rear window. It warns you in the instructions that when you're taking these little pieces off that you have to be careful not to cut the those little guide sort of clip parts in here so you need to watch so you don't cut them off. I've got your headlights and your tail light covers. So next we have the main chassis. It's a pretty basic chassis. Um, it does have a big space here, which looks like an engine would fit in nicely, so I don't know if maybe some future kits might come with an engine, but the whole, the space is there, the space is there to fit an engine in. But yeah, pretty basic chassis, but um, I, I would imagine the real car, because the age of it was like mid-60s, I think it was 65 or 66 this car was released, so uh, it's not going to be anything uh, dramatic. Uh, under there. We've got the rear parcel shelf and a couple of door cards. And the door cards have some, I don't know if you can see that, you've got some switches in there underneath the armrest which need to be painted. So you've got a separate window winders and handles but uh, those little bits need to be painted silver. That'd be pretty tricky. And I've got a grill there too. And a little switch. Also got a bag with the wheel, uh, the tyres, a couple of number plates and your poly caps. But the tyres are actually quite nice. So, so um, Hasegawa style with that, uh, the rubber part in the centre that needs to be cut away. Nice well defined Bridgestone. Logo on it there, super radios. You can even make out the size of the tire. Very nice, very nice tread pattern as well. Right, last but not least, we've got the body shell. So now I've watched a couple of people looking at the Hasegawa version, and the main complaint that you tend to see is that. This front valance um, is one separately moulded piece, sort of from this corner here right across, which then leaves you with a panel line that shouldn't be there, so you'd have to fill it in. Um, but then you've got to add in these your bumpers and indicators at the side, which can sort of interfere with it. So the Ocean has obviously found a way to get round that. Because in the real car, as you can see on the box art, there is a panel underneath here which is a separate panel, so Yoshima have managed to mould this so that the, most of the front valance is coming right across and then we have a separate piece for this panel which goes under here, which won't fit because it's still on the sprue but uh, you get the idea, so that means that you don't have that problem of having panel lines to fill and you've got panel lines there which should be there anyway This panel is actually quite well detailed as well. You've got your vents in there too. 
and some holes for other sort of parts as well. So let's have a wee look and see how we are with this new tool, how bad the panel lines are and stuff. Sorry, not the panel lines, the mould lines. So not anything super obvious at first glance, but if you take a closer look, you've got a panel line running. They've hidden it quite well. It's not overly noticeable, but it's right across this sort of top edge of the front wing, and it comes right down and straight across the bottom here. And there's also a really short one that just sort of runs in to the space in the grill there. Camera's not really picking it up. Not overly noticeable, but they are there. They will need to be removed. Then at the back, it comes out from behind the window and down along the top of this rear wing. And then it comes out down the side of the lights and out at the bottom. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be, there's like a slightly raised bit there, I'm not sure if that's in the actual car, if that's a, the mould line, I'm not sure, but they've managed to hide it, it sort of disappears into that, but uh, I'd need to have a look at some photos of the car to see if that's, this panel's sort of slightly raised, yeah, nicely defined, as you would expect with a brand new tooling, no flash to speak of, Got your A pillars there which are recessed because you've obviously got windows and then your chrome trim to fit on top of this so nicely recessed there so you shouldn't have any issues fitting all those parts in. Yeah, nice clean body shell. Just well defined grills and vents in the top of the bonnet there as well. And you've got your a dipped part in the roof too. So yeah, it's a really nice Really nice body shell. A little bit of, a little bit of them old lines to take off, but nothing major. So there we have it. That's the brand new tool from Aoshima of the Toyota 2000 GT. This, like I say, this has only just been released, so I was really lucky to get this um, sent out by Aoshima. So a big thank you to them, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting into this. As I said at the start of the video, I'm going to be moving house very soon, so the new house, I should hopefully have a dedicated area where I can build models and I'll be able to start filming stuff so I can get some build videos up, uh, some tips and sort of different things, uh, so it's not just unboxing video after unboxing video. Um, so yeah, that'll be it for me for a while. Um, I'm not really sure when I'll have everything up and running, but it won't be for the next few months. So I'll hopefully see you all at some time in the next few months. Um, I hope you have a good Christmas and New Year, and I will see you at some point in 2022. Cheers, guys. Bye.